Ella man, I'm taking you to the hospital. What? Don't worry, it's an equine hospital. We're going to Lamme in Belgium. Okay, that sounds interesting. Welcome to this new episode of It's a Lifestyle. In each episode, Ella Mainen Sink and Dirk van Astayen take you to the most incredibly questioned properties on Earth with the latest technologies and innovations. In this episode, we dive deep into the world of equine healthcare. Welcome at Ikitom, state-of-the-art equine hospital. Thank you. And again, a huge property. Where do I start today? I'll send you to Lothar for a guided tour around. Okay, and you? I'm going to talk with Tom Maria. Well, let's go then. Okay. Tom, this is a beautiful location. When did you come here? Um, oh, my story started, of course, as a veterinarian, so I graduated in 1995 at the University of Ghent. And then, and then in fact, I went to the United States and I, I did stage, you know, I did uh, in, the, in, in several hospitals in the United States. And then, uh, because at that time in the United States, the, the, the level of equine medicine was much, much higher. So I went there to learn, you know, to absorb as much information and knowledge as possible. And then I came take back to Belgium and then I took the map of Belgium, you know, and I said, where is the center where are all highways coming together? It's Lemme. And this is Lemme. It's Lemme, for and sure. Then, and then I bought this place and then I started Ekitom in 2001. And uh, in the beginning it was very small, you know, uh, and then I struggled to get a permit to construct. And then in 2014, I made the first part, two buildings upstairs. And then this uh, place where we are now is the orthopedic and revalidation de department and this was finished in 2017. So uh, we did make a, a quick uh, growth here at, at Ekito, yes. Okay, can you show me? Yes, we go around, we go around. So this is our orthopedic department. We have uh, rooms to take x-rays, to do ultrasound, treating rooms of course. Um, and as you can see, the entire building is made uh, with a lot of quality. So when I constructed the hospital, I really wanted to make it different than the other hospitals. You can compare this, this, this clinic to a human hospital. So we have different departments. We have a surgery department, we have internal medicine, uh, we have orthopedics, we have re re rehabilitation, uh, we have diagnostic imaging, you know. And of course, we have a lot of emergencies. Uh, we have horses with colic, we have horses with wounds. Sometimes a horse die, you know. So there is some stress associated in a hospital. And I wanted to create for, for my people and for my horses uh, an environment that, that makes you happy to work in, you know. And, 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 you, and you, I think you can see it. Everything is... is, is Quali the quality is outstanding. Yes. With quality, a lot of light. You and, know. What, and what is the capacity here? How many stalls do uh, you have? We have 100 uh, horses hospitalized uh, at this moment in the clinic. And now we will make a, uh, a, another extension with 50 more boxes. A complete new uh, a surgical facility uh, with an operation room completely in glass, something really uh, uh, high tech. And then we will also make a very professional multimedia room where we can, uh, when we do surgeries, when we can stream directly through the media. Uh, so that's our next step here in London. Can you tell us where Ekitom stands for? Uh, for me, all, uh, all my life, I work for high quality uh, equine medicine. So that's, that's, that's my, my goal, you know, to, to put on the level as, as, as high as possible. Um, and, and I think we pretty succeeded, you know, we are one of the biggest hospitals in the world. And if you see uh, the specialists we have in-house, uh, all the high-tech tools we have, like for example, our diagnostic imaging department, 
is really one of the best in the world. We have the robot city, we have the normal city, we have the MRI scan, we have the scintigraphy. So we are a very well equipped uh, hospital. Is that the reason why people from all over the world come here to have surgery for their horses? I, I think so. Of, of course, it's much more than a building and equipment. I, I think the, the, the doctors, you know, working, the team, the specialists working in the hospital, I think they are very, very important. And uh, every horse comes here and can be a very high level sport horse or it can be just a pony or a donkey. You know, we really battle for, 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 every, for every animal, you know. But and You have that kind of customer, yes. it's not like only the high level or no? no 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 you have to know that we are clients from 68 countries so oh, horses come lot. in yeah that's wow. a lot from 68 countries of course there are a lot of high level sport horses but sometimes it's it's, it's just a, an animal where people they, they they love their animal so much that they drive a thousand kilometers or even take the plane to get the job done you know um, because we are highly specialized, so we do a lot of surgeries and inter interventions that, that are not done, you know, in other countries. So they come from very far, yeah. Later in this episode, Derek and Tom talk about the future plans for Equitom. But first, Elamine arrived at the orthopedics department for a tour with Lotar. So we are here at the revalidation and orthopedic department of Equitom. I'm going to have a chat with Lothar and he is the head of this department. How Welcome, little man. Hi, thank you. I just gave the viewer a small introduction about you, but can you explain them a little bit more? Of course. First of all, thank you for being here. So we're at the orthopedic and revalidation department. Um, this is a quite busy department, I'm going to be honest, because we see horses from all range of disciplines, from the pony who is really a friend of the family until the horse who has to go to the Olympic uh, um, team and has this follow up uh, every two or three weeks. Okay. So for example, here we look at the horses uh, on the hard surface and on the soft horses. This horse will trot now on the soft surface surface to see how is his movement and how um, we can try to see if there is some specific issues that appeared after the last competition for yeah. example it's a, it's always really important to, to take the time and to look really good to these athletes okay, okay. not only base yourself on x-rays or ultrasound or uh, based on the history of the owner sometimes because Unfortunately, many of these athletes, they come with a specific issue. Uh, for us, this is only a moment, okay? So we need to listen very, very careful to the riders, to the jockeys, to the owners, because they know their horses really from day to day. Yeah. So we always try to find a really, really good uh, uh, interaction between owners, riders and or um, uh, trainers also. Okay. And why do you have these two different uh, yeah. surfaces? This is a very good question, okay, because some specific issues you will only see on a hard surface, others you will only see on a soft surface. Yeah? So if we look to upper limb pathology or neck issues, we will most of the time see it on the soft surface. If we look to more distal problems, we look more uh, on a hard surface for these issues. Although this is not really black and white, of course. Okay, so Lothar, what are you doing exactly here? Yeah, so this is a little bit of standard protocol for me. Yeah? So I do my tour around the horse and I'm going to palpate on all critical points. Yeah? To see first of all if there is no joint pain, for example at flexion of the fetlock joint now, to see if there is no signs of proximal suspensory pain, eh? tendon disease is very important to diagnose in the early stages. And then of course uh, we try to look if we can provoke a small pain reaction somewhere. Yeah. If we can find that region, that means something is going on and maybe we need to go a little bit more in depth in that region. Eh? So that's why the diagnostic part comes in. So okay. this reaction, what we saw, that was like a pain reaction? These are all quite normal to be honest. Eh? For us, they don't have too many secrets, although sometimes we get fooled a little bit. They're not that stupid, they're quite intelligent actually. And what's the next step with this horse? Okay, so this horse, I'm going to be honest, is going to have an ultrasound of the neck eh, to see if there is some inflammation uh, since the last uh, since the last competition. Yeah. Let's see what Lotar can find on the ultrasound scan in this horse. Okay, and what are we looking at now? The yeah. So this spot? is 
This is, for example, uh, C71. So it's the last uh, facet joint, yeah? going from the last cervical vertebra to the first thoracic. And with the ultrasound, we can look straight into that joint, and there we see that there is too much inflammation. Okay, yeah. it's not it's not uh, very severe, but it's something really to well document today and to communicate with our clients, so we can try to find a, a good solution in this case. This dark part is the inflammation. Yeah, so normally everything underneath my hand needs to be uh, dark now. So you see yeah. if I move, if I make a dynamic ultrasound, we can see all the spots in there, the white spots. And this is a sign of early synovitis, of early inflammation, okay? So there she also had this pain reaction, right? Yeah, correct. So when we were watching the horse outside, she was really tense in that region. And now we know why. And yeah. So with the ultrasound, we confirmed why she has this pain reaction there. Later in this episode, Elamine continues her tour with Lotar at the Equatom Complex because there's lots more to see and tell. But first, she's trading the medical techniques for another kind of technique. She traveled to Asselhoff and Lear to find out all about... Building automation. Did you ever hear about it or are you thinking, Elamine, what the heck are you talking about? Well, building automation is about combining technologies and apply them in your house or company. But let's go inside and I will show you what I mean. So I'm here at Aselhof, a big equestrian event center in Belgium. And all the technology they have here is controlled by building automation. Hey Philip, that's a warm welcome. <laughs> Thanks. So Hi all man. You are working for DB Electrics. Uh, what is this company providing? Uh, we are system integrators. Uh, we are combining all the technologies in a building together to one smart system. We made it easier for the owner. He can control everything with his iPad or his iPhone. He can start the show with one touch at the bottom. Can you show us? I can show you. We have one slider okay. and we can do the lights out. Okay. Well, that's a little bit dark for the riders over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, now at 100%. And there are no shadows at all, right? Yeah, we uh, did it specially. Uh, there is a lot of shadows and all the shadows together make that you, do, you don't see any shadows. Okay, and what's the rest I see? Like You have control here of the ventilation, the heating, the show lights. Everything can be controlled by an iPad. Okay, so um, the main arena, is this the only place at Aselhof where you applied the techniques? No, we did everything, everywhere, all the techniques we did. Okay. Everywhere is building automation. Can you show me another room? Yeah, I can show you the restaurant, it's here. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so Philip, I see the light system again here. Uh, but there's much more, right? Yeah, there's really a lot more. You have the sound system, you have the electrical doors, you have the, the network, the, the Wi-Fi for the clients, you have the televisions, you have the air conditioning, the ventilation, everything is combined in one system. Yes, and this system you also provided for houses, not only for companies. What's yeah. the difference? The difference is the design. You have interior designers, you can get touch buttons in marmor or in glass. Or and then you cooperate with these interior designers? Yeah, most of the time we need to, it's one meeting and then we decide which, uh, which color we need to show. It. A golden uh, button. Yeah, it's possible. So it's also possible to press a button and make a gin tonic for me? No, I'm sorry, but I can make one for you. Okay, deal. Okay. <laughs> So I really saw a lot of technologies here at Azalov. Mm -hmm. uh, did we miss anything? Yeah, there are a few technologies we didn't use here. Uh, in some stables we did uh, temperature measurements mm -hmm. and water consumption. Okay. Uh, in a clinic we did water consumption for every box, so you, after an operation they can check how much water the horses uh, consumed mm -hmm. for the revalidation. Okay, well that's impressive. Yeah, uh, it's special for horses, but yeah. uh, okay. it's nice to uh, 
think about a problem. Sometimes a, a customer comes with a problem and then I, and I, I analyze and then there's a solution. Come with a solution. Yeah, wow. I try it. Impressive. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, and uh, should I put the lights off or do you do it? You can do it. I can give you my iPhone. Oh, nice. And while Philip was fixing the lights for Elamine, she went back to Equitom to continue her tour with Lotar, this time at the revalidation department. So Lotar, the horse you just treated, it can recover now here in one of these stables? Yeah, exactly. So this is our revalidation department. We have around 40 boxes for horses who stay here for all sorts of problems. Some of them, they had the surgery, other of them, they had a tendon injury, other of them, they really uh, stay just to have four weeks of wellness, four weeks of spa, uh, because I see most of the time that the owners, they get a little bit afraid to take care of these type of horses at home. And so we offer them, look, why don't you let our horse here? It's a kind of lifestyle, of course, where we can do daily laser therapy, daily aqua trainer, daily shockwave therapy, for example. If we see after two weeks, the horse made a huge progress, we give the update to the owner, the horse can go back into light training activity, they can come to ride the horse here. We give the veterinary guidance as well. Yeah. So we really offer the combo to everybody yeah. to get the best possible care for these horses. So this is, for example, a horse uh, where the owner saw that uh, it was a little bit in poor performance. The horse was not happy anymore and who had a little bit of break uh, um, mentally also. Yeah? Our equine athletes, we always demand quite a lot of them during the busy seasons and stuff, but it's really important to get a step back once in a while and just to offer them this time of uh, enjoyment. And I can imagine this also has effect on the muscles. Exactly. So they keep, although they are in rest, they keep gaining muscles. They don't get into complete inactivity. They stay in this uh, training to develop even more and specific muscles like the abdos or the stifle muscles and stuff. So some of these horses, they come even better out of a revalidation period than you would, uh, you would expect. Yeah. Impressed by the tour Lotar gave Illamine and orthopedics, she went to medical imaging to meet Zoe. But before we arrive there, let's head back to Dirk who asked Tom about his mission and vision for Equitom. Tom, it was all, always your passion to do this kind of job or yeah, yeah. right from the beginning? When a horse has a certain problem and, and everybody say this cannot be managed, this cannot be done, there is nothing to do then for me it gets it gets interesting you, get, you know get the passion yes you want. it gets the passion and i always want to battle for the horse and goes a little bit further and uh, i'm in contact with the best surgeons in the world and also with a lot of human surgeons and i do i do uh, many surgeries i do together with human specialists you know and every month we do here surgeries that are not done before you know and this is my passion so so, so to, 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 to uh, move the limits, you know, to go further and further. Yeah, but but and, and going further and further means I, I see that you already started a, a clinic in France. Yes. It, yeah. it, you want to be in more countries or what is the plan with that? Yeah, Equitome is, 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 is a little bit uh, a branding, you know, it's, it's a branding for, for high level medical care in, 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 in horses and I have a lot of demand from other countries to put like an Ekitom like hospital over there. Like like a label. You mean? Like a label. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. like a label. Actually at this moment we are constructing another hospital in uh, the French speaking part of Belgium in Namur. And then we have plans uh, to build uh, three hospitals uh, in France. Wow. So um, in February 2021, I uh, made a partnership with Bensis Capital Partners. Because what we have at this moment is you have a lot of very good clinics, but they all work, you know, on their island. And what we want to do is create partnerships between these, these top clinics in the world. And also when, when there is an area, for example, in France, where there is a lack of, of good medical care, we are willing, you know, with Bensis to bring the medical care there and to develop a hospital in that area. So it's a pretty ambitious uh, project. Yeah, uh, it seems for me like really global. Yeah, yes. You start now in Europe, but I think you can... It, it, it can go behind the European borders, yes. Uh, I already got a uh, request from uh, from countries, you know, 
very far to, to, to make, make uh, an equiton like hospital uh, over there. But of course, we, we walk down, we, you know, we, we have step to go by step, step, step by step. step. But, uh, but uh, uh, one thing is sure, the next years will be, be very busy. Uh, but I like, I like projects, I like, uh, I'm very ambitious. So uh, we are having a great time. So I am about to meet Zoe from Medical Imaging and I think I'm at the right place. Hey Zoe. Hi, welcome Willemann, welcome to Medical Imaging. So after orthopedics or general diagnostics when it's not clear what the horse actually has, um, x-rays, ultrasound are not uh, conclusive, they come to Medical Imaging and we look in 3D in detail what's going on with the horse. Okay. First, I want to show you an XCT, an XCT, um, they're here. Under general anesthesia, usually they lie flat on the table um, and we can scan everything going from the entire neck, the shoulders, the front legs, the hind legs, the pelvis, um, but they need to be asleep. They yeah, need to be course. asleep yeah. to do this. Second, what we can do is on the other side of the CT machine, we can scan standing heads. Uh, when is this uh, important? For example, when they have teeth problems, sinus problems, um, they can be treated, scanned and treated in the same day. When we want to scan legs, standing, we have something else. Okay, so it's quite something exclusive. It's only the third active of its kind in the world. Um, if we want to scan legs, neck, back on the standing horse, we have a robotic CT, Wow, which actually is the same system as um, the CT under general anesthesia. Only the system is mounted on two robotic arms and we can scan all around the horse while it's standing. Impressive device. Yes, it is. Um, so this mainly CT is mainly for bone detail. If we have another lesion which is not bone related, which is soft tissue tendon, we have another modality to go to. Okay. So for soft tissue detail, when we want to look at tendons, muscles, or structures in the foot, for example, we have yet another modality, which is uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. It's also on the standing horse. Um, and specifically here, we can see activity of lesions not only tendon lesions, but also active bone lesions, bone edema, as they call it, um, which is uh, really important in first diagnostic, but also in follow-up uh, for sport horses. Now, this activity, all these modalities we just talked about are for one, two, three specific regions. Okay. If we do not exactly know what's going on with the horse or we have multiple regions going on, we still have uh, something else to show you, um, which is a uh, Nuclear medicine. So now we are at nuclear medicine, but am I allowed to enter? So yeah, you're completely right. Normally we cannot enter because here we work with radi radioactivity. Um, but luckily for us, we don't have any radioactive horses uh, at the moment. Normally we wear gloves, protective clothing, boots. Um, and sometimes uh, even glasses and complete LED. But I get a special treatment. Yes, <laughs> we don't have any radioactive forces come in. This is our exam room with the big camera camera. Yes, he's really glad to be yeah. here. <laughs> um, so horses stand here and in about one and a half, two hours, two hours, we make an entire image of the horse. Um, and we can see all active bone lesions in detail of the entire skeleton. Okay, so now we saw a few different rooms, but do you somewhere summarize all these examinations? Yes, we do. So after we acquire all the images, we go to the control room um, where we have, of course, big screens and we look at the images in detail. Okay, Zoe, uh, what do I see on the screen? So yes, this is the neck. Uh, we talked about Lothar, we saw the images. Mm -hmm. And this is the 3D reconstruction we make. So all the images, we put them together 
and we have a, a really detailed version. A re really detailed version. Um, but this actually is not how radiologist looks at the images. Okay. We do it like this. We separate the three dimensions. Okay. And so and we look that? at yeah, we look at them in transverse because then we can actually go and look on the inside of the horse. Then we make a detailed story. We go back to the referring vet, which is orthopedics here, surgery, or maybe the vet at home. Mm -hmm. uh, we discuss what we found, we relate it to the clinical examination, and we come up with the best plan how to treat this horse and to give a good prognostic. After her interview with Zoe at Medical Imaging, it's time to find Tom at the surgery department. So Tom is busy with the surgery, so we can't really disturb him, but let's have a quick look. With the surgery still going, Elamine left the surgery and went to the Sutter Naturally. Well, I am indeed at the Sutter, but I have no clue how to get down. Jeffrey, maybe can you give me a hand? How did you get there? Yeah, your employee, I think you have to fire him because he set me up. I will bring you down. Thank you. Jeffrey, thank you for helping me to get down. You're welcome. I hope uh, you feel more safe here. Yeah, much more, much more. Um, the Sutter Naturally, that's not a new company. It's it exists already for a few years. Yes, next year, uh, 2022, we're existing uh, for uh, 45 years. Okay. It's uh, all started by my parents. Uh, we are the leading company in, uh, in fencing and gates in the equestrian world. Yeah, and you have customers all over the world? We, have, uh, we are based in Belgium. We have customers all over the world. We are mainly, mar our mainly market is Europe but we have customers from, from Florida to New York. We, have, we did projects in Emirates, uh, actually all over, the Europe, all over Europe and all over the world. We did yeah. uh, some nice projects. And what are projects that you are really proud of? We worked for uh, Olympic champion, world champion. We did uh, big events uh, like the, the big event in Aachen. Uh, all the, we do the, the Rolex Grand Slam, the, the big shows, the big competitions, uh, World, world Cup uh, competitions. Um, we have a lot of big trading stables, uh, we did all the fencing. Yeah, because earlier today we were at Equitom, uh, you also did the yes. fencing there, right? Also that, Equitom, we did some uh, nice fencing. Yes. Yeah, and how much do you produce? Uh, we produce about 250 kilometers a year. 250? Yeah. If you have any clue how far that is, that's almost from here to Paris. So that's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. yeah. Okay, and how about your future goals? Well, the best man who can tell you more about that is Alexander, he's our CEO. Okay, well then I'll give it a try to find him. Hey Alexander! Hi! So you are the CEO of the company? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, I just spoke with your colleague uh, Jeffrey and he said you can tell me everything about the future goals. The future goals for the Sutter Naturally, those are quite a lot. Uh, well. For starters, you already see that we have a big warehouse, mm -hmm. but next year we start a build of uh, almost double of okay. what we have now. Wow. And then uh, on top of that, because of our growth, we are also building a brand new uh, production facility mm -hmm. because we have truly grown out of this one. Yeah. Uh, but also expanding to other markets is on the agenda. So we are also looking into the residential sector, a bit away from the equestrian properties mm -hmm. and into private homes. Yeah. And uh, for this matter, we are building a brand new experience center, which will be on top of our uh, current building uh, for people to come and experience our new products, innovations. Yeah, so everything. big plans for the future. A lot of plans. Yeah. yeah. And now I know that sustainability gets more and more important. Yeah, it is becoming more and more important for everybody. It has been important for us since a long time. We've always tried to source our wood 
from uh, sustainable forests. Yeah. But also in our relationships with clients, with our employees even, uh, we try to be on thinking on the long term. Uh, and the most recent development in this matter is our new uh, infinity range that we are producing solely out of uh, recycled plastic materials. Okay, but we are standing now here in the middle of your warehouse. Uh, you just told me that you also have a production process over here. Yeah. Can you show me the production floor? Oh yeah, of course. And after a long but interesting day, it is time for dinner. This time, unfortunately, without guests. It looks very good. Cheers. On a wonderful day again. Is there a personal reason that I don't have to prepare the dinner tonight? Yeah, normally um, we had dinner with Tom Maria, but unfortunately he uh, was called in France to have a surgery, an urgent surgery, so okay. he took off the plane yeah. and he couldn't be here. So that's the reason why we are alone now. Yeah, I can imagine with this kind of job, you're not always able to uh, make a planning. Oh, he's the expert in equine surgery and um, they need uh, him all over the world. But I think we can agree that we had a wonderful day today at uh, Equitom. Yes. I mean, I had an interesting tour around all the departments and you had your conversation with Tom, the interview. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, and I also love to hear the ambitions that Tom has and his international goals. How is that with Equihome? You also have these international plans and goals for the future. Yes, act actually, it's the same with Equihome and Equi Tom. Uh, it's getting global and uh, it's not what we do. It's, it's like a lifestyle. Um, we see like um, in the equine world, people come over in Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany during spring and summertime. And when the weather is, is getting bad, uh, they go to, to Wellington, Florida, Ocala, or some of them go to the better weather in Spain, uh, Sunshine Tour or Oliva. Yeah. So that is also the, there are also the places where we are with Equihome. And um, he wants to be global and we, we too. Yeah, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm impressed about all the things I see every episode and all the properties and all the huge, uh, huge buildings and, and, the, and the horses and everything around it. And what is the plan for the next uh, episode? I'm going to show, show you the next level. Next time it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful properties in Belgium where they organized like five-star competitions. Okay, well, and then next time we also invite some guests again, right? Because it's not always a romantic dinner for no, you No, 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 <laughs> next time we will be with our guests at, at the table. I okay. assure you that, yes. Well, if that made you uh, just as curious as me, then stay tuned for the next episode. Yes, enjoy your meal. Enjoy it. And thank you for today, uh, Dirk. Yeah, you too. It was too. a wonderful, uh, wonderful episode again. You too.